It can be a right pain when you add items to your drop down list, going in and reconfiguring all the ranges that they're looking at. I've got three ways you can automate that process completely. So let's have a look. Right, it goes. So we've got three different types of drop down list on screen. They're only there so I can demonstrate that these processes work with some and not with others, and a couple of them work with all of them. So first type of list, data validation list. So simplest to set up, very easy, good for data entry, etc. Um, form control, and then the full on active X control, singing, all dancing kind of uh, control there as well. At the moment, they're all hard coded to this data range here, E3 to E15. Now, if I put my name on the bottom of that, you will see that precisely nothing changes. I can't get to that list, that item on that list because of the hard coding. One thing I could do is I could say, well, let's give my, buy myself a bit of room. Let's say, um, let's change the list so on data validation, for example, let's change it to 20, make the list a bit longer, right? Let's do that on all of these, format control, 20, ActiveX control. Now for that one, I need to go into design mode, click on it, go to the properties, bit more fiddly, change the list fill range. Okay, so done, right. Now I'll type my name on it. Hey, let's put a capital letter at the front, come on. How's things changed? Right, can I access it? Yes, of course I can, but I've got like this one blank at the bottom, which is kind of odd, but whatever. And the reason for that actually, that reason that has got one blank on it is because this, if I click control end on the spreadsheet to see where the last cell is, even though there's nothing in that, that cell has been used before. So the data validation is thinking it's a valid cell. If I just populate that, I'll put up for Excel in, for example, at the moment, uh, you won't get a blank on the bottom, right? What about the form control? Horrible. It now allows me to pick blank entries because it's, it's just letting me go all the way down. I don't like that. Um, Perhaps I'm a perfectionist or something, but I don't like it. All right, this one, same thing, same problem. So extending the range, first method, only really works with data validation, but it, it sort of automates to the resizing, so that's good. Okay, method two, my personal favorite, works in almost all cases. Turn your list into a table. Control T on your list. It's now a table. These are all still linked, the bottom one being where it is. But if I put in up for Excel on the bottom, the table is automatically expanded, as you can see. And even though these were linked before I built the table or before I turned it into a table, all of them now are linked to that table and will pick up and expand their list. Nice and simple and will work in the vast majority of cases. Now, it might be that you can't turn your data into a table. So what if you want to automate it and you can't use the table method that I've just showed you? Then you need the method I'm about to show you right now. Right, so you can't turn it into a table, you know, perhaps it's connected to other things or actually, if you're using ActiveX controls and you're filling the list programmatically, um, you might want to, for example, refer to it by named range. So this method uses named a dynamic named range. So what we, what we need is a list count. So if I do count A at the top of the list, and which will count any kind of data entry, not just numbers, and I'll expand the list down to about you know, to the bottom of the screen. So I just used a control shift and arrow down to highlight that range. So this then gives us our 13 numbers. 
And if I put another one on the bottom, it's 14. Okay, so step one. Next, we want to create a named range that uses that number 13 and starts here and then goes down 13 rows. So we're going to use a formula inside the named range to do that, that links to that cell. So every time something gets added, the name range expands and then we'll just link these controls to the name range. Right, how do we do this? Right, um, help her remember where it is, right, so, oh no, formulas, there we go, right, name manager, we want a new one, right, let's just, I can put a little n at the beginning, um, because I always like to start all my name ranges with a lowercase n, so that if they're being used in formulas or in code, I, I always know straight away, that's a named range keeps things simple. Right, so what do we want to equal to? So we're going to use the offset formula, which allows us to define a range of cells or a single cell. So we're going to use, obviously, define a range. So the start of our, the start point of our formula is going to be this province header. So by having your offset start at the header, it means that if I sort of shift the entire list down and put a new item as number one, my start position is still correct. So that's my start position and offset. How many rows do I want to move down to create the start of my range? Well, one. How many columns do I want to move across? None. I'm in the right column already. Right. How long, how many rows is in my range? Well, that's this number here. All right, how many columns are in my range? Just one. Okay, so we now have this N province. So that's, this is our name range now. Starts at E2, but it moves down one, doesn't move across, and it's 13 rows. So it starts on that row and goes for 13 rows. Now, if I click in there, you can see that it's highlighted that range. Okay, so now all that remains to be done is link these to it. So it was called N province, so I'll go back to data validation. Instead of that as the source, I'm just going to put right, N province and click OK. Same on this, format control. Slightly different, don't need the equal sign, you just type in N province. Okay. All right. ActiveX control, slightly different. Sign mode, back onto the properties. So the list field range, which is currently that. Let's just put in N province. Okay, close that. So at the moment, hopefully they're still working, yeah. Let's take it out of design mode. Yeah, everything's still working. Now, I'm going to put up for Excel and uh, great tips. Uh, watch more, hey, whoa, right. Have they been added? Of course they have. Those all been added to the list. Here, yeah, they've all been added. Here, not been added. Right, what's gone wrong there? Okay, so why doesn't the ActiveX control update even when I add things on the list? The answer is because you need to do it programmatically. So it's relatively straightforward actually. So we click on there, get our properties. So genuine explanation is that when you use, by typing in here, what you do is you populate that list once and for all. I mean, incidentally, if I delete that, go up here, come out of design mode, there's no list, back in design mode, click on it again, type it in, Again, 
click out, come out of design mode, we can talk about faff, you now see it's there. Because when you populate that field for the first time, it populates the ActiveX control and it doesn't go back. So if you just change it, it doesn't work. Or, or the list changes, it doesn't work because the list has been populated from its initial position. So, sorry, just going to show you how you do it. So the first thing, very important, um, I made this error off camera. You need to delete the list field range completely because you're going to activate it using code. And if there's anything in there, you will get an error when you try and populate the list via code. So take that out. Right, that's the first thing. Then we can close that. Back on there, right click, view code. So it's going to create a combo box change event. We actually want a um, drop button click event. So I want the list to change when someone clicks on the button. So it doesn't really matter until they do that anyway. So I can delete that one. And I've actually created the code earlier. And this is the code that you need. Now, let's just tidy that up and make it just explain it. Sorry, do that. Right. So sheet one dot combo box one dot list. So the list that's in the combo box one on sheet one. Now sheet one is just the VBA code name of um, of this list, right? Strangely, it's not particularly common, but you need to use application dot range. I don't entirely know the rationale behind that, but if you just use the sheet dot range, doesn't seem to work. So application dot range, put in your name range dot value, and that populates the whole list with the, with the values of that name range in a single line of code. And it does it every time you click on the button. So now come out of design mode and click on the button up for itself on there. If I remove that, even though that's selected, you'll find it's not in the list. Put it back on, back on the list. Right, so that's it. That's your three ways that you can have drop down lists updating automatically when your list size is changing. Hope you found that useful. Have a look at all the other stuff on Up for Excel for plenty more tips and tricks. See you soon.